We're into the final third of the 2019-20 EPSO Premiership season. And let me tell you something, the heat is on. I mean, just earlier on today, we got news of the suspension of coach Kevin Johnson of Black Leopards. They've got four, they're sitting in 14th place, rather. Same number of points on the EPSO Premiership table as Bulukwane City, uh, as Bulukwane City as well as Amazulu are right there at the bottom. And uh, word is still out as to exactly what his future is when it comes to Black Leopards. Different reports that are coming out. So a lot of pressure on so many of those teams right there at the bottom. But where there might be some breathing room, you know, is uh, a team that has a 10-point gap on the rest. Are they enjoying this moment? Are they remaining focused? We're going to be asking those questions and getting answers as well straight from the horse's mouth. In the studio tonight on Extra Time, as we welcome you and welcome your questions as well on hashtag Disky Simplified, is our special guest. Special guest first, before I talk about the analysts that are joining us for tonight's edition of the show. Good evening, Coach Ernst Middendorf. Yeah. Feels good at the top, doesn't it? <laughs> Indeed, uh, yeah. Carol, just to answer, I don't know if I can give an answer to each and everything uh, what you're asking, but uh, we are enjoying it. There's no doubt about it, uh, building up our confidence and, uh, yeah, where we started at the beginning of the season and uh, quite consistent. Mm. Well, the cool cat is here with us as well tonight. William, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Carol. I know and you're chomping at the bit to get stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, uh, for me, I'm a little bit surprised at the transformation that I see from the Ernest meeting that we saw some three, four, five seasons ago when he arrived uh, animated and uh, aggressive and uh, screaming, angry, yeah. uh, smiling a bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something unusual. <laughs> but something you love seeing, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Coach, for me personally, I just yeah. want to find out what has changed. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a right of each and everybody to uh, assess uh, yourself in terms of uh, making progress, making, uh, producing a different uh, direction. And I think uh, I had a fantastic time in, in Bangkok, uh, being there two years, uh, in another position, not directly the coaching. It was more the technical director position. And uh, yeah, good. And you observe a lot. You see, mm, okay, what coaches are doing. Is this okay? Is this really? And then you go back and uh, reflect yourself. Uh, and then you find out, uh, ooh, 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 probably you did the same over years. But um, that's one point. The next point is, uh, I think, the leadership, uh, what a team wants today. And I was uh, really very busy with it, uh, researching it during the time, tried to go in. Uh, what's requested today? Uh, leadership uh, in terms of managing a team uh, is a lot more than just to, to make them fit or just to, to handle them. I think you have to give uh, responsibility. You have to put the expectations into the direction of the so-called core players and um, give them a little bit of the freedom uh, to make decisions uh, under a frame of certain principles. And uh, this is another reason why um, probably a change in, 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 in everything what I'm doing as a coach. Mm. Coach Lulu, I can see you're listening with keen, keen interest because as the coach rightfully said, you know, he's done some introspection and you can see the difference now when it comes to the results. Good evening. Evening, Carol. Mm. Uh, I mean, I mean, royalty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ex case achieves. Yeah. Current coach. <clears throat> Is the universe talking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's true what coach is saying. Sometimes, or most of the time, it's not about you, the coach, but it's, what about, it's about what you can give to the team so that they reciprocate. And I think, um, coach, you're really doing an incredible job. Uh, most people are always asking, is it straightforward like that all the time? Because sometimes as coaches, we like to sugarcoat. But I think uh, it's fair to give you that question to say, <laughs> do, are you always straightforward and giving it to them straight as they don't want to hear it so that you grind results? Or do you sometimes stay back and be lenient on them? Uh, it's different. It's, uh, the situation is, 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 uh, has to be reflected. And, uh, I'm not uh, putting my standard uh, uh, down, uh, despite changing probably the certain leadership uh, management uh, role. The standard is really what has to be set, what has to be uh, put to the point, uh, it will be done. There's no doubt about it. And I think uh, that's one piece of, of experience I have. Uh, in the end, the players like it. The players like to know. They don't, the players don't like, uh, nobody likes it. Uh, as a player, mm, the little here and, and you 
you swim around, whatever, and in the end of the talk, in the end of the communication you had with the player, he doesn't know what, what, what was said, what is it. But if you tell him you have to do better in certain directions, if you want to have a chance to play, please change or uh, look a more individual uh, training into it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's understandable. And then we have these examples. We have Leonardo Castro, we have Wilhard Katzander. They all were probably not directly involved in the plans, uh, being first 11 players. And uh, we had these chats about what has to be done, what has to be changed. And they are out, out of questions, uh, first uh, core players, first 11. When you start getting in uh, those very, very good results, there's always a target on your backs. And uh, this past weekend, I think a lot of Kaiser Chiefs fans were breathing a sigh of relief because it seemed as if Golden Arrows had their number, defensively at least, mm. keeping them at bay up until the dying seconds. This reminds you of that particular game. And it was so well publicized that uh, Golden Arrows were planning to do just this, keep Kaiser Chiefs at bay and work on their defense. You know what, um, which is what you can appreciate from Steve. Because if you're going to play against a quality side like Kaiser Chiefs, you know they're going to come at you in certain moments, in a certain way. And uh, you've got to do a little bit of homework on how you're going to deal with those instances before you think about going forward. I think from that point of view, he was excellent because for the most part of the game, he was able to deal with it. But I think he forgot about the additional time. Maybe Steve forgot that in a game there's additional time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but were you anticipating this coach, this, this kind of approach, this much resistance from Golden Arrows? Uh, definitely. I went uh, to watch them in this uh, Polo Kwane City game uh, a week before. Um, you could see already in other games, uh, if you observe them against uh, the teams like Sundowns, Midwest, uh, and so on, uh, Sundowns twice, even uh, where you go deeper in, and then you see you see what's coming. Um, it was not a surprise, uh, and we had it during our entire week in preparing uh, properly. Be patient. Uh, the, the performance parameter really in this moment. Be calm. Go again and again and again. If it is closed on one side, do the vertical return and try to the other door, coming into the success to produce the scoring opportunities. And it was clear for us, uh, we will not get too many clear-cut uh, scoring opportunities. Mm. It was not a surprise. But, uh, you know, if you do it, if you come again and again and again, probably a little bit of uh, fatigue is coming in, a mistake is coming in. And uh, then, even if it is extra time, uh, we stayed calm, we went our, our way, how we want to do it and uh, not uh, working good in our rest, rest defense, yeah. not offering a counter-attack uh, situation and yeah, in the end uh, I think uh, we were quite active and then probably you deserve the three points. Yeah, so you plan um, to have a really solid defense but then there needs to be another plan about how it is that you are going to go forward as Golden Arrows and, 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 and score those goals. Yeah, I mean the modern game requires you to have a plan for transitions yeah. and it's either if you don't win between those periods from defense to attack or attack to defense, then you will have a problem because you have to find ways. And I, I exactly understand what coach is saying. And if teams find ways to block your key players in terms of those transitions, sometimes it becomes difficult. And on the day, it's how quick you anticipate speed of thought, of pass, recognizing the spaces. That's what's important. And if players don't understand that, and it's, it's true, fatigue, sometimes the opposition don't see those spaces to close down. And that's where you come in and and do the damage, get a goal. Mm. Hashtag Diski simplified. Sunil Sat says we need 15 points from the remaining games to lift the title. We are almost there, coach. Um, Karabo13 says I really can't wait for the Soweto derby on the 29th of February. It's going to be a match between two Soweto giants and two German coaches without a doubt. It is going to be a thriller. Amakosi for life. Send us uh, your questions on hashtag Diski simplified. Well, things certainly started off very well this season for Kaiser Chiefs. We'll remind you of those results. They started like like a house on fire. A lot of work being done, coach, in pre-season, clearly. After finishing the last uh, uh, season with uh, 18th of May, losing even uh, a cup final against the Barcelona of Africa, 
Um, I think it's it's definitely something where you sit down and you plan, you reflect, you go in, and you you, you really must say uh, we have to train different. We have to put the players in in better uh, shape. We have to bring them uh, more responsible and an end. And we had a lot of players not really fit for different reasons: injuries, probably not uh, being focused in a way, probably not challenged in in a proper way. Uh, so this this was uh, definitely uh, the talk inside the technical team preparing the season, going into the pre-season uh, preparation. And then, uh, of course, if you start on the 4th of uh, August uh, in, a, in a match against Highlands Park, we have yeah. seen it, we were expecting it will be very, very difficult, had a good start. Then in this moment, it got totally out of hand. And uh, in the last 30 minutes, uh, we turned it around. And uh, that's important. Obviously, key players were brought in, not too many. Yeah. And if you think about it, the core team still is the team that was there last season. Yeah. And uh, Nurkovic, just how informed were you about him in as far as how is he going to fit into this team? Yeah, with, with Samia, I never saw him playing before. Uh, but uh, here it comes to, to a certain network you have as a coach. Uh, over 26 years I'm doing it now from uh, Ghana, Germany, South Africa, Iran, China, uh, the Eastern uh, Europe. Uh, there are a lot of uh, players with a certain mentality. And what we did here uh, in, in general, uh, we put uh, players not only from Europe, not only from Africa, uh, Zambia coming, uh, from, from Slovakia coming, from Australia coming, uh, a certain age requested, not, not this 19, 20, 18 years old, we have enough for this, they can't uh, carry this responsibilities. We need players who have been, uh, that was our target, who have been on this stage, who can take this responsibility and provide uh, a certain success. And with Samia, it's, it's just a product of uh, good networking, uh, where we uh, went all on the phone, we had yeah. all discussions around it, uh, and yeah, then you get uh, probably 10 voices and uh, they're all confirming that's the man. And then you go in and then you have to make the decision. Wow. Yeah, it, I mean, Coach, it's, it's incredible to see how him and Castro are going together. They're both towers and it's unusual where you find <laughs> two strikers that have almost the same physique and they're competing well within uh, in the field and the competition is really uh, great. How do you actually keep them so motivated? Because this Kaiser Chiefs team is a team that is scoring so many goals and shutting the back door as well. And as, like you say, you've got youngsters that you are bringing in, but you don't want to uh, kill them with so much responsibility. But how do you get them to understand the fact that they score but they have to close the back door. Yeah, it's, uh, it was not planned really, but you see, you go into a discussion, you see uh, Leonardo and Samia, that could be something totally different, that is totally different, uh, in particular uh, in the South African uh, PSL. Um, it worked well, they have a good understanding. They, they, they communicate uh, very well in terms of their movement, in terms of their activities, defending, attacking. We have very often already a high pressing line uh, and uh, of course, uh, players, younger players, uh, will have a, uh, a learning uh, effect uh, in terms of seeing what these guys are doing on a professional level in their age, probably on top of their performance uh, level. And uh, this is something uh, Dumisani Suma, Happy Marciane, uh, Jabulo Blom, they're all enjoying it. I know they want to play more, but uh, keep them into this uh, perspective, work with them, give them here and there uh, a chance to play, but not in a way that you put all on these shoulders. It has to be done by these experienced guys. Mm. Nusikazi says what Coach Anz did with this Kaiser Chiefs team is amazing. He took a team that was demoralized and really turned them around. He signed players that he needed and uses them well. It has uh, become really difficult for others to stop this moving train. Um, a question here from uh, Duma who says, please ask the coach, how does he feel about Gassi, good balls, she balls. Are you against those things? I know the most important thing for coach is to get the result. What do you think about that flair and uh, creativity? Give me just, just a chance uh, to go to the first part of, yeah. your, of your statement. Um, and we have a very clear understanding. I'm probably in a responsible situation. If some stuff is not going well, of course it comes back to me. That's, yeah. that's this understanding I have. I produced over the decades. But uh, 
to, to make it very clear, uh, we have a technical team, we have a management, we have uh, responsible uh, Sean Bartlett, Lee Baxter, uh, Gerard uh, Mark uh, in the analysis uh, department, uh, guys who really contributed from the beginning, from the start in a certain way. And of course, the challenge they get, uh, I'm responsible in this moment to challenge, to provoke, uh, to, to ask them for even more. Uh, day in, day out, uh, there is never a situation uh, starting a week with uh, being satisfied. There's always something you can do better. And uh, this is my job, really, to put it in place. But it is not done uh, by only one person. Yes. Kaiser Chiefs is a, is a brand with a lot of knowledge, with a lot of uh, resources inside. Sometimes I'm thinking a lot of resources are there, but not really used to the maximum, to the optimum. And uh, there's still a lot of space uh, for improvement in this direction. To your second uh, question, uh, I was a little bit surprised to hear one of the most decorated coaches uh, recently uh, put this in, in such a uh, uh, critical, negative, yeah. uh, negative uh, uh, platform. I didn't really understand. I was surprised that uh, it comes out of this. As long, and that's for me the important stuff, uh, in the own half, far away, <laughs> running back with the ball, and then do this this uh, crap, uh, sorry, that's not working. That's, that's not soccer. Then you see uh, a YouTube clip or whatever that somebody wants to be smart and clever and said, yeah, they do it all over the world. Messi, Neymar, yep. uh, they do it. But they do it to eliminate a one against one. They do their tricks to make it successful, to win uh, a one against one and to go onto the next line to make it four against three and to have a purpose to score the goal. Uh, when you find a, a, a reason to explain it to me, when somebody does this crap in their own half, and just to whatever, what is the purpose? What do you want to do? <laughs> and you should not do it. I, I, I made it very clear. Um, sometimes players get carried away, therefore don't waste so much energy uh, to discuss it or to talk about it. Just leave it and that's it. Okay, coach. So, after a great start in August, we move on to uh, the results in September, October. And, uh, Shoti, their first loss for Lukwane City. And I must say, uh, that loss uh, against Polokwane City, Polokwane City was still in the top eight, doing well before they experienced all this they're experiencing now. And if you look at it, that's the only game they considered a goal against and the rest it was clean sheets they were scoring goals that speaks to how do you turn the corner you know because they come from a good august where they were doing well and as soon as you hit september the tables are turned but it's always good when you get you know that bounce to say hey everyone is still chasing against you but i think it's always a case achieves that um is provoking uh people yeah to do their best do you think the same, Coach? Yes, of course. It's it's the status uh, the brand Kaiser Chiefs have. Uh, it's it's very clear. It's in, in each and every country. There is always uh, two. There are always two or three teams uh, in Spain in in the German Bundesliga. It's all much fun to play with Arminia Bielefeld in the Bundesliga against Bayern Munich. Wow, that's it. To play here with Maritzburg United, what I have done several times against Kaiser Chiefs, I can tell you there is a vibe inside the dressing room. There is a vibe, uh, and it doesn't matter if Kaiser Chiefs is even on position eight or seven, uh, you play Kaiser Chiefs. That's something what this club, this brand in 50 years earned. They worked hard for it to get this position and uh, produce uh, provocations. Then you look at um, one of the standout results during this particular period. So, so much talkability in this one. We were excited in the build-up uh, when you came up against Mamelodi Sundowns, mm. defending champions. Tell us about this game and um, what it is that was just working so well for your side to get this great result? Yeah, no, no good. It's, uh, you know, watch this, for example, uh, against us uh, very often too, against Mamlodi Sundowns and other teams. Uh, uh, probably in the moment, obviously, Orlando Pirates come coming back into the position. Uh, we worked at this in this moment with with uh, two front strikers, Leonardo and Sami and uh, uh, Kamabiljat. Yeah. Uh, so, and then uh, what uh, a defensive is not really defense line is not really used to it. 
they are not really used to it. Uh, probably our defence line when all of a sudden two or three. Uh, I was quite happy that uh, on, on the weekend uh, La Mola was not on the field. Uh, I saw what they could do uh, probably uh, uh, in this game against Polokwane City. They made it very difficult for them and this is something when, when you make a decision to say okay, uh, put the defence line from the opponent under pressure, produce the chances and then in this moment be available uh, to use the scoring opportunities. This was a game definitely on both sides. There were scoring opportunities, there were mistakes on the defence on both sides and uh, yeah, we used it to our advantage. Probably we made uh, less mistakes in terms of throwing away scoring opportunities and in the defence and uh, then you win in the end. A very touchy subject, Coach, um, particularly this season, is you have had to deal with uh, Akpe being the number one and with the recovery to Kune, mm, yeah. whereby now people are expecting that Kune will make a, an, an immediate mm. uh, comeback in, into the team. And uh, somehow you stuck to Akpe. And in the past, we've seen Ak Kune being able to make it back immediately, recovers. Um, what would have been your thinking to this? Obviously, it's still I, well up there. I think it's, it's uh, uh, definitely, uh, and I said it already, it uh, was our responsibility. Probably here it comes uh, back to my shoulders. Uh, when we brought him in uh, in this game against Barocca, where he got again injured, uh, it was too early. It was too early. He, he was, he was uh, in the training process, yes. Uh, he was fully in the training process, there's no doubt about it. But in the end, uh, it it means more. You have to, the competition, you, you have to be concentrated in your doing. And uh, good, getting injured again. And then, of course, Daniel Akpe started to perform, uh, keeping us in games with good uh, penalty save, mm. with other uh, moments where you really said fantastic performance. And I think, meanwhile, uh, good, uh, Ito can get this uh, opportunity to get into the right shape and to be then really in a very competitive position. Uh, if you are out, and that's a rule for, for seven months or eight months, uh, for what reason, then you get injured again. And most of the time, to be fully fit, to be fully competitive, you need the same time. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's, it's really incredible to see how he is. You know, mostly you look for it love before you can put it in your hand and it mm -hmm. fits. But I think he has done incredibly well in making sure that he marshals at defense. You can see with his, uh, you don't get that a lot, especially with him coming from cheaper into a big brand like Kaiser Chiefs. I think he didn't disappoint. He showed character. And I think it's exactly what you were doing it's to a, them. He's such a, such a character, such a personality. If you, if you, even if you win against uh, Bloemfontein Celtic, uh, uh, a return in the second half and so on, uh, or making it happen happened to save a penalty. The game is finished. He does his uh, thank you, thank you. He goes into the dressing room. The first, uh, I hope, uh, Daniel, I can talk about. Uh, the first, what he's doing, he, he polishes shoes in the corner. Uh, every time. After and, the game? And, yes, after the game, make it happen. It's always the first in the dressing room. And it's incredible how calm, how clear structured. Wow. And with his calmness, he gives uh, the defensive line, the team, uh, the certain direction. He's not, he's not erratic, he's not running around and, and, and get lost. It's so, it's so impressive, fantastic. Wow. wow. So nice to hear that from a coach. <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. You. And he's listening. I'm sure he's listening. <laughs> uh, so many people here are saying, uh, Kindinu Ka uh, Kakumba, for example, says the Soweto Dab will have a big say on you. Eventually wins the APSA Premiership uh, title. He says, some might say I'm crazy, but that is my conviction. Let's remind you about the November results and uh, the big match that, as always, you know, South African football-loving fans, you look forward to this fixture, William, the Soweto Derby. And at a time when, uh, obviously, things were looking a little bit bright for Cassius, but we weren't too sure if they were going to break the ice this time around and be able to suddenly start uh, showing the dominance of, of the signs that they've shown throughout this season. Very impressive. Yeah. I think all of us are just sitting and listening and taking it all in because when it's the sort of W... Obviously, uh, Orlando Pirates has had the upper hand for so mm. long, Coach. Mm -hmm. And you come in, 
the fans, mm. probably the club was expecting you to be the magician and turn the corner. <laughs> How did you find that in yeah, your uh, preparation uh, what towards we are, this What game? we are doing, we, we are not highlighting, oh, it's Pirates today, oh, it's uh, Black Leopards today. It's, it's, we, we prepare ourselves for, for the, uh, with, with uh, less emotion, with, with not really putting too much in and get carried away. Uh, we had our problems in this game, uh, no doubt. Uh, Pirates came uh, fully deserved back uh, from a 0-2, uh, making it 2-2. Uh, but this is something where you then as a team uh, react uh, in halftime or now after we had this 2-2 conceded, uh, going into it and force uh, with, with individual brilliance uh, that we got this third goal with a penalty. Uh, or coming back from a 1-3, from uh, or coming back from a 0-1, like in Cape Town. Uh, this is always something where uh, a team is able to react, is able to go for another gear and uh, make it happen in the end, despite uh, there are struggling moments in between. Very quick one as well on hashtag Disky Simplified. Um, just wanting an update in terms of how far Kama Billiard is <laughs> coming back. Um, Spelel and Janga say a lot of questions about those players. Yeah. A quick one, coach. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is. Uh, We're in last I think. I, <laughs> no, I, I actually. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to to talk about the players uh, on the being on the field, yeah. uh, make it happen where we are sitting in the moment. Uh, really fantastic performance like George uh, Maloleka or Lebohang Manyama or Eric Matoho or Daniel Cardoso uh, or Leonardo Samir, mm -hmm. uh, and of course this young Tia Tia on the side. Uh, Kotso did a good job. Free Frosler is back uh, into selection. Um, of course, we know we have a, one of the best strikers uh, uh, in our squad. Uh, Kama Billiard, uh, uh, we had our experience uh, um, over the last uh, six months. We took him out two, three weeks here. Then we played him again. We took him out again two, three weeks. We played him again. And uh, after the match in Maritzburg on the 22nd of December, we, we said, listen, this is not working. We, we don't play a player with uh, 75 or 80 percent uh, sprint capacity. Uh, we put him in a program and uh, good. I believe he will start in the next days uh, training with the team. How far he needs now, 22nd of December. Today we are going close to end of January. Everybody knows uh, it's six weeks already not played, not really kicked the ball uh, on a special program to get all his uh, uh, injuries, uh, tightness uh, into the right direction to solve the problem, solve the issue. And I hope in the moment that he will latest uh, in the end of uh, February, probably beginning of March, uh, being available and help us uh, for the final uh, two months. Mm. So uh, winning the Q Innovations, uh, Coach of the Month accolades, the most recent one now uh, being, of course, Pizzo Simani. Let's talk about the chasing pack. Mamelodi Sundowns and uh, the threat you think that they're going to pose. Uh, Super Sport United Pirates. Who? Uh, Super Sport United. How you call this? And Orlando Pirates. How you call this? What, what was it? The chasing? The chasing, the chasing pack. pack. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not so disrespectful at all. They, they, um, I know they don't uh, think it's politics, but I keep myself polite. Uh, Mamelodi Sundowns does a fantastic job uh, on the international level, Champions League, inside the league, uh, winning already a cup. Uh, therefore, in this moment, there's nothing to complain about. Uh, we have to be realistic. It's not 10 points, it's 7 points. This outstanding game, they will win. Uh, and the other teams, like Orlando Pirates, coming uh, in, in good shape, um, making the results. Uh, um, Supersport, uh, we know. Uh, has one or two games more than, than other teams. Bitwest uh, has a huge program in front of them, can make it very close if they win all these games. Uh, show respect uh, in, in, a, in a way that we know we haven't achieved anything. We know we haven't won anything uh, till now. Um, we are concentrated to our own abilities, uh, be busy with uh, our reference points, and this is always the last game we played. Uh, we look into it, and now the next game in front of us is Royal Eagles. Yeah. I went to watch Royal Eagles yesterday 
yesterday uh, in this game in Peter Maritzburg against uh, Ajax Cape Town. Uh, looking into it, this team has, has definitely a certain potential in the moment, probably not 100% fit. Uh, conceded the, the goal uh, where they lost the game 2-1 uh, in the final two, three minutes. Uh, so this is uh, uh, as an example where we are busy with it. Yeah. We, are not, we are not getting champion because other teams are losing, because other teams are not performing. We get champions winning. Yeah. winning games, making points to the maximum, to the optimum. And this is, I think, the right perspective. Well, Coach, thank you so much for joining yeah. us in the studio. Yeah. So far, so good. Amakosi fans, uh, we know that you absolutely elated to be hearing uh, from your coach here in the studio. But, hey, amen, time, time. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have to let you go. And you well done so far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll now, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, okay. I go. I go now. This man Thanks. sleep three to four hours every day. Yeah. That's all he sleeps. So please, a little bit more time. Chiefs is winning. Okay, good. Then I can go uh, uh, an hour earlier. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Great.